Howdy y'all and welcome back. Blackhawk Omnivore. This is going to be an extremely limited or disjointed product review on my part. Uh, it will not be remotely comprehensive, but I think I do have some feelings about it already. So uh, this was sent in by a Patreon. Thank you, Robert. And he hadn't even set it up yet. It doesn't have the belt. We'll, we'll get to that. But the idea with the omnivore is it's kind of like uh, the Filster Floodster Flood Floodlight Floodlight Filster Floodlight, floodlight <laughs> where uh, the retention mechanism locks in to the light as opposed to locking into the gun or like in particular the like barrel lug or whatever. So I get it. Uh, I have reviewed the floodlight also, and I got it on there as well. <laughs> um, I'm not super crazy about the way they lock in, but that's just me. I think conceptually, it makes a lot of sense. The other issue <laughs> is that Robert is left-handed. I am not. And this one is made for a Streamlight TLR1, which I don't have. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's just take this over to the table and get a closer look. <laughs> All right, so jumping into the holster itself, build quality is exceptional. This stuff is rowdy, sturdy, <laughs> burly. Uh, you could probably run over it and it would survive. At least the body would. I don't know about the mechanism, but this body is very, very stout. And I don't know what kind of wizardry has been employed here, but part of this is kind of a tacky, sticky rubber, kind of like those Magpul grips. Uh, and then the rest is a standard uh, Kydex, smooth. So smart design language. I like it. And I'm a big fan of sturdy holsters. I, I don't care for the thinner Kydex. That's just me. I'm sure thin Kydex probably works just fine in most applications. Uh, I think where it really would be more critical is on an inside the waistband. If it's going to be inside of a belt, thinner Kydex. If you cinch the belt very much, it can start to collapse the holster, which defeats the purpose of the Kydex holster in the first place, but I digress. And again, this is a left-handed model. So there is your thumb release. It would operate like that and does seem very easy to find and smartly placed. So, but I will, if I fumble a little, it's because I'm not left-handed. All right, comes with two mounting options, your standard belt guy or a paddle guy. I'm not a big fan of paddle in general, but it does at least have this extra hook on there that you could very, very positively, you know, get up under your belt. And that is gonna definitely lock it in place. So if you wanna go the paddle option, this is, as paddle rigs go, that's pretty squared away. Just not my favorite. I really prefer a standard uh, and so that brings me to, I looked at these holes and I was like, hmm, that looks very Safari land. So using an extra G code guy that I have here, adapter, it does in fact line up with the Safari land holes. So if you wanted to put a Safari land mounting bracket on and use it on a Safari land drop or mid ride or drop leg or whatever. This gives you a lot of options. So that's well thought out. All right, so let's move to how it actually works. So I do not have a TLR1, but I do have a Surefire X300 and we are clear. So let's, oh, it's so strange because it's left-handed. <laughs> but using the Surefire X300, it just barely works. We've got the trigger guard is all covered. That's, I even have a light on and it's still hard to 
see, but that's a little more exposure to the trigger than I would be comfortable with. Again, I, I think what's happening here is that the X300 is just a skosh longer than the TLR1. And so I think this would sink down in a little more with the TLR1. But it does, if you were curious, it will work. It does lock in there. It's not going to go anywhere. So it will work with the X300. And let's see, we depress. And yeah, man, I am very not left-handed. It works fine. I'm just, this feels like like getting onto a bicycle backwards and trying to ride or something. It's, it's very awkward to me. But yeah, that totally works. But I do have, and Robert sent this as well, this light, uh, which is a bit shorter, and I have a feeling it's going to be closer to the fit that a TLR1 would be. So give me a minute. Let me flip this light onto this gun, and we're going to try that out next. All right, after some fumbling, I got the LAPG light dialed in onto the Glock 19 here, and it doesn't really lock. It's close. I don't know exactly where the failure is to engage, but it just is not engaging. So that one is a fail. But again, this is made for a DLR1, and I have all the confidence in the world that with the correct light, it would sink down in there, and I think it would tuck in just enough farther that any uh, exposed trigger guard concerns would be alleviated. All right, so where does that leave us? Like I said at the beginning, I cannot do a comprehensive, detailed review because this is wrong-handed for me and I don't have the correct light. So that's just right out of the gate. That's a bunch of fail. However, I think I can safely pass along that it is, it feels like really good quality. And I, you know, I'm sure there are much better <laughs> reviews of these out there. Uh, this is just mine. Um, conceptually, I do, I, I like the concept of having one holster and one light, and you can switch that light onto lots of different guns. I don't have that many semi-auto, like, compact to full-size guns where I'm switching them around a whole lot. It's like, I'm just not, that's, but I know lots of you do. So for a lot of people, this would make a lot of sense. And I have definitely bought enough holsters for no more guns than I do have. I have bought enough holsters that I can totally appreciate wanting to streamline the amount of them that you have and kind of get it boiled down to where you can just take that light, put it on a different gun, use that gun in that holster. Like, I totally get that. The drawback to this concept, and it's the same thing with the floodlight, is that if the gun is locking into the light, the light is this big and the gun is this big. So if, if the lock, if it's locking into the light, it's just, that's a smaller thing to lock onto than a whole ass gun. Does that make sense? So it's never going to feel as secure in there as a holster that is locking onto the gun itself like a, a holster that is designed and contoured to fit one gun. But that means you have to buy a holster for every single gun. And then if you change the light on that gun, <laughs> you probably need a different holster for it too. Now on my Safari Lands, like the 6000 series, um, like I'm currently, my M&P has an Enforce light and the holster I use in that is actually made for an X300, but the Enforce light fits like fine. It has ample room because that holster locks into the barrel lug of the M&P. So it has quite a lot of latitude. You can run a smaller light or like a TLR7 
there are like tons of options that will all still fit inside of that 6000 series because it's molded to the gun and it locks into the gun. So <laughs> there's no cheap, easy way to get around this stuff. But I do think this is, if this application appeals to you, that I could recommend it quality wise. And I know Blackhawk has a lot of haters out there because of Serpa, and I will eventually get around to doing, I have a Serpa video coming. Um, I just don't have the right gun for it, but I will do a dedicated Serpa video to why we don't Serpa. And Blackhawk Black Hawk gets a lot of shade thrown at them because of the Serpa, and I get that. Like, that's fair criticism, but everything I've ever owned that was Blackhawk was pretty decent quality, you know? So sometimes we just like to get a product or a brand and just razz on it real hard and oh light. <laughs> and does it always deserve it? No, not really. But, you know, it's part of the game, right? So anyway, that's all I got for today. Sorry this wasn't more helpful. <laughs> but until next time, be easy, y'all.